sort of theory. I, I was a graphic designer and I had a graphic design uh, degree in South Africa. And I came across when I was 21 and um, went to the Central School of Art and got another degree there. And then I started working for a quite a well-known at the time, he's um, since died, a uh, graphic designer. We actually sort of, um, things like the weights building people, you know, they still have the sort of two bricks with weights building on them, a huge outfit now. And um, British Rail, we worked a lot for British Rail. But I was very friendly with a woman called Jessie Rowbottom, who was a sculptor, and I was a sculptor, and we were both at St Albans College of Art doing, you know, things. And um, she was involved here in Chorleywood with Ron Skilton and things, and she said to, to me, you know, they're thinking of starting an art centre. And... Um, it was then that she actually asked me, and I don't know how I got into it, go around and look at places that would be suitable. And I can't remember all the places we went to, but I definitely know that we went to John Roberts, that is now, because that used to be the telephone exchange. And so we, and they were closing down, and the telephone was going somewhere else. And they, um, we had a look at it, and thank goodness we didn't buy it, because um, parking would have been impossible, absolutely impossible. And then they found Collie Land, and um, Sally's husband definitely decided as an architect he could change it, because it, it had no upper floor or anything like that, you see. And we um, he put the upper floor in, and it, but it was one end and the other end, and in the middle, when you came up the stairs, there was a sort of passageway balcony thing that you could look down into the bottom. And so you were walking between the two. And it, it just, when I took over, well, I think it was before I probably took over, I said, we've got to change this. We've got to close in the floor. There's enough window light down there to paint with. And so I had it closed in so that we've got a complete floor that would, um, you know, accommodate many, many more people, of course. So um, that's what happened. Oh, it was pretty good because it was just empty as a church. They'd moved out. And so if you look in the uh, in it now, you can still see the sort of, archway upstairs that was the final end of the church as we, shall we say and um it, it was a very pleasant place from the very beginning i think it took about three months it definitely took quite some time and um it slowly de developed from then on you know that it, it's changed and it has changed again. The kitchen has been redone and the new kiln. And then we, I had, when I took over, I had the um, new lavatory and the gas boilers put in because before that we'd got storage heaters, which were useless. Mm -hmm. Everybody put five pounds in as a brick. Right. And, and whoever was involved, and other people put more money in if they'd got it. Uh, and that was sort of people just basically wanting an art centre and would give as much money as they could. And I mean, I think we purchased it, purchased it for some ridiculous price, like 3000 or something. You know, it was very little. And at the time... Um, we got some money from the gas people because they put their substation in the corner. Oh, there's been an awful lot of activities. There was a very big choir. They did 
very well for a long time. And in fact, did so well that they decided the art centre wasn't good enough. And they went to Clement Danes when Clement Danes was built and used to sing there, I think. And then there was, we had weaving. It was a big loom. It was a piano. Um, there was an awful lot. We had a lot of Scottish dancers. Um, it was all sorts of things like that that wanted to uh, participate and have someone that could go every week, as it were. 